This video is on leptospirosis. The case definition of leptospirosis is it is an acute febrile illness with history of exposure to water or environment that is possibly contaminated with infected animal urine. So in leptospirosis, it is more commonly due to rodents and with any of the following symptoms listed over here, which I will go through more in the later slides. The causative organism of leptospirosis is leptospiral interrogants and the incubation period of the disease is around 10 days. So if the patient, we suspect that they have leptospirosis, we have to ask further detail in the history taking. So ask whether they, have, they could have had any recent exposure to any contaminated water or soil by asking any history of recreational activities such as hiking, jungle trekking, rafting, canoeing, and especially swimming in the jungle waterfalls. And also ask about their occupation, whether there are any sewage worker, farmer, soldier, or veterinarian that could have contacted with the rodent's urine, leading to leptospirosis. The symptoms include high-grade fever with chills and rigor, and it is remittent in nature. The patient could also complain of gastrointestinal symptoms such as nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, jaundice, and diarrhea. Musculoskeletal symptoms like myalgia especially at the calf region is an important symptom to note in leptospirosis. And also arthralgia. For neurological symptoms, they might have retro or bitter headache and signs of meningism such as neck stiffness, photophobia, and headache. Ocular symptom like conjunctival suffusion where they notice that their eyes become very red and on the skin they might have rash and also complain of coughing as well. This is a picture of conjunctival suffusion which is a sign that we have to look for in physical examination. It is a very strong sign to suggest leptospirosis. So on physical examination we check the vital signs especially the temperature and respiratory rate which we expect fever and tachypnea. We also check the weight, height, and BMI, and do bedside tests like urine dipstick to check for any hematuria and proteinuria. That could suggest kidney injury. General examination, we check the hydration status. Is there any rash where there are usually macular papula or purpuric rash? The face, look for the conjunctiva suffusion and also jaundice. Any muscle tenderness in the calf and lumbar region. For systemic examination, we check the abdomen, palpate for any hepatosplenomegaly, and also lymphadenopathy. And also check the respiratory examination as well to hear for crepitation. For investigation, to confirm the diagnosis, we have to do microscopic agglutination tests. Other investigations include PCR and also culture of the blood and urine. To assess for organ involvement, do full blood count, to look for leukocytosis and thrombocytopenia, liver function tests expect hyperbilirubinemia and raised liver enzyme, renal profile expect high creatinine level, euphine, and also one important investigation is to do creatine phosphokinase, which is expected to be high in leptospirosis. Coagulation profile may be deranged if there is liver failure. And lumbar puncture can be done if we suspecting aseptic meningitis, where the expected result would be polymorph leukocytosis, normal glucose, and maybe a little bit raised protein. For management of leptospirosis, we from general management we give antipyretic to control the fever, give oxygen if there is hypoxia, fluid adequate replacement to maintain the hydration status of the patient, and also remember to notify about the disease within one week. The definitive management is to give antibiotics, depending on the severity of the disease. So if the severity is mild to moderate, we can give oral doxycycline for 5 to 7 days. If it is severe disease, which includes pulmonary syndrome, involvement of multiple organs or sepsis, we have to give IV cetrazone for around 7 days. And then we can de-escalate to IV benzopenicillin for 7 days when the symptoms improve. That's all for this video, thank you.